and there a missing sweet. Yes, that's it. We be on fun of one new. After the bono, mumma and mum pee, young more na and con kind. Mum boni ye na and share a rade and you yam. Today be missions week. We want to encourage you that don't forget those of us in the mission areas. Give. This is the mother of all weeks, the bedrock of what we do as a church, Missions Week. The Church of Pentecost was birthed out of missions through the obedience, commitment and sacrifice of Pastor James McKeon and wife, Sophia McKeon. The couple responded to the call to missions by coming to Ghana to spread the gospel. Years after this obedience to God and sacrifice to respond to the mission's call, we witness a glorious church that is this year revived to possess the nations. The Church of Pentecost is now in the position to send the gospel of Christ to all corners of the world, possessing all nations for God. By the grace of God, the Church of Pentecost is now in 108 nations around the world thanks to the efforts of both internal and external missionaries and their families and to individuals who graciously donate to support the mission's work. This is Makino Missions Week. We want to thank you all for your love and for your support over the years. The mother of all is the Missions Week is here with us again. We want to bless God so much for what we have been able to achieve together as a church. We have done so much so far as the mission's work is concerned. And I think that we have not disappointed God at all. This year's Missions Week is under the theme, Revived to Possess the Nations. Apostle Emmanuel Jesiado is the International Missions Director of the Church of Pentecost. Just like his predecessors, including Apostle Professor Pukunina, Apostle B.K. Arthur, Apostle S.K. Beidu, Apostle J.C. Yadu has led the missionary agenda of the church for the past 10 years establishing more churches around the world, putting up church buildings at locations that need it, providing social amenities to communities in need and ultimately winning more souls to Christ. By the time this video comes to an end, you will be revived in your orientation, in your perspective about missions and in a way that will motivate you and encourage you to give beyond the normal so that we will be able to overcome the challenging year that befell us last year so that this year we'll be able to at least come up a bit, make up for the shortfall that we encountered last year because of the COVID pandemic. The year 2020 was a difficult year for the whole world because of the coronavirus pandemic. In spite of the difficulties the pandemic brought to the world, the mission's work still continued. In this documentary, one by one, we look at how much has been achieved locally through the work of missions in spite of the COVID-19 challenges. Beloved, where we are standing is the Borga Central Chapel building. This houses the center of the church's activity in the Borga area. And by God's grace, there used to be a small building inside here which had a capacity of about between 100 and 150, which was dedicated in 1965 by our late founder, Pastor James McKeon. But then, as the church was growing, then there was the need that building be pulled down and then another one put up. And that where the preliminary works were done by my predecessor, Apostle Jimmy Markin. So when I took over from him, there was the need to continue the project. And so in 2018, the IMD Apostle Jesse Adu came around and then when he saw that building, he was so shocked. It was so small, being the head of the a Borga area seat and so he decided you know from the missions grant to help us and by God's grace this is how far we have reached and we believe by the end of next month we'll be dedicating this building unto the Lord. The area has received 
tremendous support from the missions field. As I'm speaking now, we had one local at Titukpeni, that is Kechebi district, and then also one at Nyambong, also at Sabong district. And then Damanko also received support from the missions office. Damanko Mission House, if you go there right now, you realize that we have a mud building that has been there for a long time. But as I speak now, and as you see now, we are building this uh, new mission house, which God willing will be completing any month from now. So when we created the area, this small building here used to be our central uh, chapel, which takes about 150 to 200 people. And this building that you see behind me here was at the lintel level. By, by God's grace and your offering and your prayers, now we have grown and we have been able to put this building to this stage. In fact, we nearly and wanted to finish and dedicate it last year, that's 2020, but for the sake of the COVID, we couldn't. And therefore, this year we are praying and then appealing to all of you to uh, help us to make sure that uh, we'll be able to give and give uh, better this time so that God willing, through the missions office also, we can get the support together with the area and then with the district. We'll be able to complete this uh, beautiful auditorium and then use it for the glory of God. In fact, this one has become the center for every program here in Kwanta area, uh, not only for the church, but also for the town. We actually started this area with almost 100 assemblies. Five of them were more or less roofed, but they were not fenced at that time. But by God's grace, as we speak, we have over 70 of the assemblies being housed in the church building. We have been able to use the missions grant to put up about 15 to 20 churches. A church building in Tare Tayaguli has been completed and then dedicated. That of uh, Kochai and then Nawia in Pina district, Zene in Zene district, Pin and the hospital assembly in Hain district, Tuvu and Dabozizi in Ipabongo district, Saobe in Funsi district, Balema and then Koprema Sakolo. These church buildings were put up through internal missions grant. We created one last year, that is Nabugubele district. And by November, when the minister arrived, the district mission house was fully completed with light and water. We realized that one of the problems that we have in this area is water, especially during the dry season. Mission house like uh, Philemon district, Pale district, Hain district, Isa district, Kojopele district, uh, Sumbisi district, Zeni district have had their share. In fact, we drained the boreholes, we mechanized them, mounted a stand and then put a polytank on them. They all have mechanized borehole. And the interesting aspect of it is that the communities are run, the people are run. Instead of traveling distance to go and fetch water, they come to the mission house to fetch water. In fact, when we started the area, we realized that the central seat, which happens to be the area seat, the church building has the capacity of 150 to 200. Now that we are supposed to observe the protocols, it can only contain 100. So it is really difficult to hold any meaningful joint service in that church building. And therefore, we saw the need to put up a bigger auditorium that can contain between 800 or 600 to 1,000 people. We have been able to pay for the land, documented it, and by God's grace, we have been able to put up the building which capacity will be somewhere 7 to 1,000 or 8 to 1,000. We have been able to put up an area office just by it. And all to the glory of God. Had it not been missions grant, it would have been very difficult for Tumu to raise that money. We have 17 pastors. And whenever we come to meeting, accommodation becomes a big issue. So we also thought it wise that it would be better to put up a new and district mission house for that of Tumu district so that the old mission house will be renovated and then use it as a transit cottage so that when the ministers come to meetings, they will have a place to lay their heads. That mission house is roofed, waiting for plastering and then the finishing aspect of it. We are currently at Nzulezu. It is a city upon waters. Coming from the inland to a place like this is not a joke. But because of the mission-mindedness, 
we have made every effort to be here. As you can see, this is the chapel which was solely funded by the missions directorate. And that is not the only thing they did. They also enhanced the transport from the inland to this city on waters. They bought a boat and then furnished it with outboard motor, which has been used for the past five years. Unfortunately, the strength of the outboard motor has gone down and it has visited repairs for a long time. So it is quite uh, not in good shape. And then the boat that which was bought also, the wood got rotten, but the area has managed doing the work of machines with this. And with the effort of the district pastor, he has been able to mobilize the members here and they have reached another community, which is in the same manner like in Zulezu. And we have an assembly there. About a year and a half ago, we had support from missions. Uh, that is, they built a boat and that boat was given to Akatin district where we have the uh, river flow. And many of the assemblies are beyond a river. Sometimes the pastor find it difficult to get a boat to cross the river. This boat is now helping to the extent that any time the pastor is ready to move, uh, he wouldn't have any problem. By the grace of God, the boat is helping the work to grow uh, in those areas. It will interest you to know that among the 17 chapel buildings dedicated 2020, about four of them, Mingi is dedicated, Asimekope is dedicated, and Donkokrum Atosu, that one has also been dedicated. And then we have uh, Sidikope, that one is at the Dwarf Island, has also been dedicated. Our place is uh, like an island or a peninsula. We have to pass through water to most of our districts and the local assemblies. We thank God the head office has granted us a fiber boat in addition with the sea boat that is weaker now. And we are making every effort to reach the unrich. The Lord through this mission office is really helping the work in the northern sector, especially in Tamale here, Boko, Bolga, Wa, Yendi, Tumu, and all these areas. But the challenge that we normally face is a place to house them, a church building. And with your support, many lands have been acquired. Many church buildings are now in progress. We are building churches for these people. And we know that with time, they will be on their feet and they will also support the work. Kintampo area also received support from the mission's office. This is the Gulumpe District Mission House. Gulumpe District was created out of the Bupe District in 2021. Gulumpe Central Church Building is also under construction. A new mission house for the Bupe District is also in progress and a church building for the Yipala Assembly also in the Bupe District is almost completed. We have planted churches in many places that sometimes it even baffles our mind. We only say that it is the Lord who has opened those are venues for us. The missions board decided that we must also think about the cities, our strategic places in the big cities. This informed our decision uh, to help some of the nations to acquire major, major properties in strategic places in their nations. Uh, and so uh, it is amazing that the last year, 2020, that was the most challenging year in the last 10 years. It is that same year that we were able to support nations to either acquire or put up very imposing edifices to the glory of God in terms of our places of worship and mission houses. A place like Dubai, uh, the missions board was able to uh, help Dubai to acquire strategically placed place of worship which we have rented to serve as a place of hitherto we've been meeting in hotels and guest houses, etc. I spend over $30,000 on mission house rent every year. Thanks to God, I no more do so because we have a mission house of our own. We have also uh, put up a very imposing national headquarters church and offices in Madagascar, in the capital Antananarivo. 
place like DR Congo, very uh, nice big church, Uganda, very imposing and beautiful national headquarters church and offices in Kampala, uh, in Kivet, in, in a city called Bovista, um, about three-story building, in Tanzania, in Sierra Leone, in Kenya, in Argentina, in Senegal, in the Gambia, etc., etc. The Church of Pentecost in Kenya is about 20 years old, by the grace of God. As at the close of December 2020, we had 112 assemblies, most of which are in the Maasai area. We have also a community church in Tarsia, Nairobi. We have PIWC in Nairobi. We have some churches in Eldoret, some churches in Busia, and also in Mombasa. By the grace of God, we did the sword cutting for this edifice on the 6th of July 2018. And by the end of 2020, we had completed the national office complex. Your sacrifice, your prayers, and the offering you make towards missions work is never in vain. It is yielding dividends for the Lord. By the grace of God, we are standing right at the mission house of Kivet, that is the National Mission House. This mission house has been so beneficial to the nation, looking at how it's pretty costly to rent a house, a room in this mission. Here we are in the auditorium of the Church of Pentecost, Kivet, that has its capital as a prayer. We want to thank the Lord so much for giving to us this wonderful edifice, which is supporting and helping the church in diverse ways. Despite these immense helps the mission offerings have been to missionaries in the field, there are still a lot of needs that need to be met. Here are some of the needs of some selected local mission sites. We want to be smear everywhere with the word of God, every village, every hamlet. And so even as we bring the people, uh, we don't have better places of putting them, settling them or housing them. So in most cases, they are under trees. These are small, small uh, uh, assemblies which are under trees. We have a lot of them. And even of late, those worshiping in classrooms have been ejected because of the COVID issue and the directive by the government. We are praying that the Lord, through his mighty works, you know, will touch um, other people to come and then support us to at least settle some of them so that they will also be able to have a better place to worship the living God. Here too, we are beset with conflicts, pockets of conflicts here and there. And then some of these conflicts have affected the members and the church so much that in some of the communities, some of their houses have been bent down and these people don't have any place to sleep. Their clothing, their food items, their animals have been killed and the people look so miserable. And we are praying that people who are so blessed by the Lord uh, will come to our aid so that we can support our brothers, you know, who we are fellowshipping and have gone into such kind of situation. We have several churches under trees and we are praying that you will come and support us. We have churches over bank and crossing over to these churches sometimes is very difficult. You get there and then the only canoe in the village is gone. You have to wait a long time before you go and cross again. If you are able to give to support us and then we get even one outboard motor, a simple locally made one, it will go a long way to help us with our overseas local assemblies and because we are in missions area it's difficult for us to support the cbcb project though we try somehow it takes a longer time for us to finish one project so please today be missions week we want to encourage you that don't forget those of us in the mission areas we are appealing to all of you to come to our aid to support in Quanta area to move several churches from under the tree so that together we shall possess the nation for the lord the area is Islamic dominated area. Therefore, we have a huge tax to win more souls for Christ. And as we continue to win souls for Christ, you know the burden ahead of us. It means we need to house them. As we win souls for Christ, it means we have to open assemblies for them. As we open assemblies for them, it means we have to build for them. As we build these assemblies, we create them into district. 
And as we create them into district, it means we have to put up a district mission house. Once you put up a district mission house and the minister is posted there, it means that where there is no water, you, have, you need to get water for them. These are all issues that going forward will continue to solicit your support for missions. And especially in times like this. We still need help. There, because we do not have major roads, only feeder roads, we need tricycles and their motorbikes so that we can use to convey the members to and fro and also to reach the unrich. We appeal to all and sundry, whoever is hearing our voice, as we see the missions as our mandate, we mobilize all the needed resources. And the first resource for missions work is you that I am talking to. And I want you to come on board so that we all together, we mobilize resources, human and material, that we are able to reach the unreached. Our mandate is to capture the whole world. As we mark Missions Week, let us fervently pray for God to heal the world of COVID-19. Let us also fervently offer prayers to nations that are experiencing war, leading to hunger and other forms of injustices. Ultimately, let us pray for the salvation of mankind. Your contributions and prayers have taken the church this far. We can do more to reach more souls and possess our nations for Christ. To achieve this, your effort and contribution is highly needed. There are still lots of lands to be taken for the Lord. We need to possess everywhere for the Lord. And so we have come your way again to ask for your support, to ask for your prayer support to pray that everybody everywhere who hear about Jesus, that none should perish. We have come your way also to ask for your support, your moral support for the missions work and the missionaries. This year, we are looking up to you that God will touch your heart and cause you to give beyond your normal giving. As a glorious church revived to possess the nation, let us come together as a family and donate to support missions work. The time is now. Donate and receive the blessings of God. At this time, we want to thank the Lord God Almighty, the one who counted us worthy and called us into this ministry. We thank him so much for keeping us for a solid 10 years. Now, we want to thank our former chairman of this church, Apostle Professor Opoku Onina, and the wife, Mama Grace. They've been so helpful, and in fact, it has helped our ministry. We also want to thank the current chairman, Apostle Eric Nyameche, and then Mama Mary Nyameche. In fact, they've been also a blessing to us so much now we want to thank the missions board the executive members as a whole the apostles the prophets evangelists pastors and wives then the church officers as a whole missions donors friends of missions all those who help this work and upgrade it to this extent we want to thank them so much and we are asking God to bless all of them. God bless all of you. Based on what you have heard and seen, I want to plead that this year we go beyond the normal and give in support of missions. We are also appealing to you to continue calling the missionaries uh, wherever they are. Uh, this is the time that the expect our encouragement and pray that as you take your phone and call them uh, whatever you spend calling them will also be replenished uh, by the Lord. Your continuous financial support to this mission's work will help us to capture places and to possess nations that we have not yet captured and I'm praying that this year you do far more that you have done in the past. Give bountifully and God is still a rewarder.
and God will bless you and you will bless your offspring. Give so that we will be able to save souls from hell. Nations going.